Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video, you guys. I am hosting every other month a subscriber requested challenge. Please don't forget to check the playlist in the description box below. You guys are not gonna wanna miss any of these videos because these are all inspired by your guys' request. So my co-host for today is my best friend, Nicole at The Week's Nest. I'm so excited to show you guys these projects. So I have been asked for a really long time to do boho decor. So that is what I'm gonna be doing. Dollar Tree Farmhouse Boho Decor. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay guys, so to start off, I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple cutting board with just some scraps. So I had a lot of these handles to the larger stir sticks laying around. So I drilled a hole up at the top and then I took this other scrap piece of a wood plank from Dollar Tree. I had cut off the end for a different project. So I had this piece laying around and I just took some wood glue and some hot glue and I attached that to the top of this wood plank. Next, I took my wood putty and I just filled in the crack where the handle and the little wood plank met. And then there was also like a little knife cut in the bottom of this because I tried to cut out a piece to a different project and it just didn't work out. So I did fill those in and then that stuff dries super quick. And then I just sanded that down and stained it with special walnut. Now usually with cutting boards, the edges are kind of rounded and I thought that it looked a little funny with it being so square. So all I did was take a really strong pair of scissors and just kind of, uh, not sand, I kind of cut a little curve to the edges as well as on the top of the handle. And then I went in with my mini zip sander and I just sanded those down smooth. And then once I was done that, I took a piece of jute, I strung it through the hole and then tied it so that there was a knot at the bottom. And then I took a little dab of hot glue on the end of both my jute strings to kind of make like a needle point. So I just put a dab of hot glue. I um, kind of twirled it in my fingers to make a point. And then I strung on four beads and then tied it at the top. And literally you guys, it's that quick and easy to get a mini cutting board. I love the way that this turned out. And you're gonna see kind of a theme throughout this video that I am gonna show you multiple different ways to make cutting boards as well as some other projects. So if you guys are new here, my name's Melissa. I am so grateful and happy to have you here. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much, much more like Dollar Tree hauls and thrift flips. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would stick around by clicking that red subscribe button, become part of the family and don't miss a notification by clicking the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. You also don't want to miss anything because I do giveaways every other week on my channel just to give back to you guys and show you guys my appreciation for being here and supporting me week after week. Don't forget to check the playlist in the description box below. Again, I am so excited for this challenge. It's another way to give back to you guys and show my appreciation and I thought that it would be fun to have as many people participate as they wanted to. So don't forget to also go check out my co-host this month, Nicole from The Week's Nest. She is a very good friend of mine and I love her so, so much. So each week on my channel, I show you guys my earrings of the week. Now these are just a simple pair of gold hoops with diamonds in them of course they're not real diamonds your girl is not fancy but again surprise surprise i did get them from walmart for like 30 bucks 
and I wear them all the time. So if you want to send me a pair of earrings to feature on the earrings of the week and get a shout out, my P.O. Box information is in the description box below. So with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. Moving on, we are going to take a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree as well as this faux cutting board sign from Dollar Tree and I just kind of trace out that shape of that cutting board as well as these smaller cutting boards. I got these off of Etsy and I kind of just use them as templates because um, although they were really cheap, I like to use this technique with the foam board that I've seen so many do, but I'm pretty sure that the original original person who did this was Sarah from the Peppermint Cactus. Um, the things that she does to foam board to make it look like wood is absolutely amazing and I always love to give credit where credit is due. Originally I saw Shelly Nemeth with Gilbert, I, I forget, but it's um, Gilbert repurposing I believe don't quote me on that but I originally saw her do it and then the more research I did I figured out that Sarah from the peppermint cactus like I said was the original creator so I did just want to mention that um, but I love what she does I love the way it turns out and it's foam board you guys so once I had those traced out on my foam board then I go in with my hot knife and I cut those out you guys it cuts like butter if you don't have one of these it's an amazing investment I think they're only 10 bucks on Amazon and it's definitely worth it so I just carefully cut those out and then because it kind of leaves an edge of that paper on the foam board I do just go in with my zip sander and sand down those edges smooth I then go in with a bath sponge from Dollar Tree. I cut it down in fours and I go in with my Waverly Antique Wax and the clear wax and kind of mix them together. And then um, I should have did this first, but you kind of want to put blemishes in it. So I take my fingernail and I make little knots and then I go in with a tiny flathead screwdriver, a poking tool, just all kind of different things to just put blemishes because wood is not perfect and this is what it's this is what's going to make your foam board look so natural. And I just wanted to show you like the tools I was using. And then, um, like I did before I started putting the blemishes because I got a little ahead of myself and I work backwards sometimes, you guys know that. But once I had the blemishes on there, then you want to go in with your sponge and that uh, antique wax and the clear wax and you just kind of want to put lines on it. You let that dry. So I started with the first one put the blemishes and the lines and then I went to the next one I did five all together and then um, once those were dry then I started back at the beginning with the original cutting board Now because boho decor is not my normal thing and I was pretty much out of my comfort zone with this you guys but you guys requested it and I wanted to bring it to you. So I did go on Google and look up a color palette for boho and I came up with a color palette that had a lot of natural colors. So I went to my Waverly chalk paint and picked out fawn mineral and then obviously the brown Waverly wax as well as you're going to need some ink Waverly chalk paint as well. So once all those lines were dry on all of my cutting boards I then go in with my antique wax and the clear wax the same mixture I used in the beginning and I just kind of brush that on the foam board and then I go into the knots and the little blemishes and I just push my sponge down in there to make sure that they are filled and you're not going to see any of that white showing through and then it also fills it up darker than the rest to look like the knots on wood and I just love this it, it was so therapeutic you guys I could sit here and do this all day um, but 
once I had that the way that I liked it, I just kind of played. I went a little light and then I went a little dark and then I also um, painted or not painted. I sponged on the wax mixture onto the edges so that way again they weren't white. Once that was dry as well, then I do go in with my Ink Waverly chalk paint as well as the clear wax once again, and I focus on the edges, so I kind of um, sponge on some black to the edges as well as in the knots, and just randomly kind of lay down that mixture, and then with the end of my sponge, I kind of wipe it off and just kind of blend it in to give it some dimension and make it look authentic and like a cutting board now hopefully that makes sense you definitely want to make sure that you are using that clear wax because foam board is so porous um, if you just go in with regular paint it's not going to look right so make sure that you have that clear wax and um it, it's very important so once i did the first bigger one um, I do the same thing with all of them, but some of them I use different colors. Um, for the bigger round one, I went in with all three of the colors because I wanted them all to kind of tie in together. Now, I let all of my cutting boards dry for a good couple hours before I moved on to this step. So once they were dry, I took my Chalk Couture transfers, and this is part of the Farm Charm collection. It has these gorgeous little greenery into the animals, so I felt that these were pretty boho. So I do just take the cow and my white chalk paste and I transfer that onto the middle bigger one. I then took this feels like home transfer. It also has a little chicken with a beautiful little boho design and I transferred that on just the uh, chicken with my I believe this is dune yeah it's called dune and um, pull back that transfer look how amazing and crisp that image is it's so satisfying you guys and then um, for the next one I just took this pattern that I got from a different transfer and a lot of the chalk couture transfers come with many different elements to them so you can mix and match them that's another thing I love about them most um, but I just took this little design transferred that on with my white and then I took this house cutout design and this one I kind of wanted it to be like a mod podge of the dune and the white so I just placed some of the dune randomly around and I do the same exact thing with the white and then when I squeegee this off I go down, I remove the excess onto a paper towel, I do the next line, remove the excess off my squeegee, and so on and so forth. And then once again, I pull that transfer back to reveal this beautiful, amazing image. And if you are looking for any of the Chalk Couture products that I used in this video, I will have them linked in my link tree in the description box below. Now to finish off these faux cutting boards, I took this faux leather ribbon from Dollar Tree in this beautiful camel color. And for the smaller ones, I cut the ribbon down into threes. And then for the bigger ones, I cut it down into twos or in half, I should say. <laughs> and then I just put those through the um, 
top of the cutting board i tie it off and then cut off the excess and look how amazing that looks you guys i love it so much i love doing things that are outside of my comfort zone because it gives me a chance to be more creative and do a style that i wouldn't normally do so i love this challenge because it challenges all of us to do something that's outside the box. So let me know what you guys think of these cutting boards. Can you tell that they're foam board or do they look like real wood? I love them. I think they look just like real wood. I have showed them to multiple different people and none of them can believe that it's foam board, but I'm always curious to hear what you guys think. So let me know in the comments down below. So I would love to thank Shauna for the craft supplies. If you enjoy my work and would like to support my channel and get a shout out on my next video, just go to www.buymeacoffee.com slash all things crafty or follow the link in the description box. You guys don't have to support me monetarily. You can like my videos, share them, subscribe, watch the ads, click on the ads. There's so many different ways to support your favorite creators and whichever way you support me, I appreciate every single one of you more than you'll ever know. Moving on to the next project, I take this little candle from Dollar Tree and I start by taking the sticker off of the bottom. I then go in with my Fawn Waverly chalk paint and I give that a really good coat, making sure to cover up all those little details. So unless you want that pink showing through, make sure that you are getting in all of those crevices. Once that was dry, then I go in with my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush on the edges to bring out those beautiful designs. Now for this, I wanted to make a macrame hanger. So I am gonna leave the video in the description box below that I watched because this was actually my first time doing it. I kind of messed it up a little bit, but in the end, it worked out beautifully. So even though it was my first try, I didn't mess up too horribly bad, but you're supposed to take six of 11 foot pieces and then kind of fold them in half over a ring now i had seven pieces so i had a few more pieces than i should have but that is okay so i started with a spiral knot at the top and if you don't know what that is you basically take the ends of each of your rope from the back not the front and then you pull your first piece up and over and then you take your second piece from the back end and you take that down and around the back and through the loop of your first one and then knot it now generally with a with a square knot you would um, go from left to right and um, you know alternate your pieces but because you want this to be a spiral you're just going to work from one side so once i had about 12 spiral knots in there then i do go down about five inches I believe I should have went down about eight inches because in the original video it says 12 inches but because she was using a bigger pot and I had such a little one that I kind of 
didn't go far enough down so if you do this just kind of put your pot up to it and see how far down you want it but um I took four pieces and I did a square knot so that's when you're going to go back and forth to keep them straight on all four pieces and then you want to go down a couple more inches and originally I should have took two pieces from each of the strands and then two more pieces from each side but I didn't so I had to end up doing that underneath and it kind of didn't sit in there right but it did and then at the end I made a uh, or I joined the bottom with a gathering knot. So like I said, this was my first time. I know that you couldn't see it too good. I thought you could. I was looking at the screen the whole time, but it looks much bit much different on a bigger screen than it does a smaller screen. So definitely check out the video below. Once I was done with my macrame hanger, I put the pot in the middle with some little succulents. And that was it for this one, you guys. Even though I messed it up I just kept going and I absolutely love the way that it turned out so let me know in the comments down below what you think even though I messed it up okay friends moving on to our next project I take one of these wood slat plank I don't even know what you want to call this but I got it from Dollar Tree and I made faux stain a couple weeks back which is just antique wax some ink waverly chalk paint and some water mixed together and I just give this a good coat of that faux stain Next, I take these little pop dot stickers from Dollar Tree. These are the smaller ones. Now, I'm not going to lie, you guys. I had such a hard time getting these to stick. I don't know if because they were so small or, you know, what happened. But the stickiness on the back was not that wonderful. But I made it work. So, I just kind of placed those at the top of these little mini buckets that I got in the wedding section at Dollar Tree. And then I... I did that to two little buckets, I should say, and then I gave them both a good coat of my mineral chalk paint, making sure to be extra careful around those little pop dot stickers. I then once again went in with my white Waverly chalk paint and my mini chip brush, and I just distress both of them. I then go in with some hot glue straight down the back of these little buckets and I glue one to the top left hand corner and one to the bottom right hand corner. Last but not least, I take this jute hanger and just kind of staple it forwards that way when this is hanging it hangs straight rather than wanting to like lean backwards or forwards and then you can put whatever floral you want in these I chose to put some succulents to go with my boho decor but whatever type of greenery or flowers you put in it would look absolutely amazing so let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite per usual Okay guys, so moving on to this wall vase from Dollar Tree. Now it looks gorgeous with this galvanized metal, but I felt that that was too rustic farmhouse. So I started by taking the hanger off at the back as well as this sticker in the front. Now a little trick is obviously everybody knows to heat up your sticker, but if you just get a little bit of the edge raised, then you can kind of point your uh, blow dryer right down on it and kind of pull up while you are heating it up if that makes sense and it pulls right up so once I had that uh, sticker pulled off I took it outside and I spray painted it with my canyon black and then once it was dry I took this beautiful scrapbook paper and it's from that same exact scrap book, scrapbook paper book that I've been using I think it's the modern farmhouse book but I felt this was more boho because of all the texture and I kind of clipped it to that front part, flipped it over, traced it out, and then cut it out. 
and because I wanted some of those black edges showing through I just trimmed and trimmed little by little until I got it exactly how I wanted it and then I glued it down with my disappearing purple glue stick. Next, I have my little helper helping me and I'm just kind of showing her what I want and she just wanted to help so bad, you guys. So I love when she helps me DIY. I hope one day she will be an amazing DIYer as well. She already is, so I definitely don't doubt it. But I take these little pop dot stickers that we used on the little buckets and I just kind of paint a few rows of them with my Ink Waverly chalk paint or I should say, she painted them. I let her use my quick dry tool to dry them really quickly, and then her and I used my Cricut weeding tool to get them off of the backing sheet and put a border around the edge of this as well as the top edge. Once that was done, I had a few that would not stick, so I just kind of kept pressing them down, and eventually they did stick, and then I went in with some gold acrylic paint, and I just dry brushed the edges as well as the edges of these little pop dots. Next, I took one of these pulls. I believe it's called like a circle pull or I don't know exactly, but they're linked in my Amazon store in my link tree in the description box as well. And then I went in with some jute and I strung that through the back where the hanger is once again. I tied off that knot and then I kind of twisted it so that the knot was on the inside so that you couldn't see it. And then that was it for this one, you guys. I love the way that this turned out so much and I love that you guys suggested this to me because if not, I wouldn't have stepped outside of my comfort zone and did something a little bit different than my normal uh, content. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this plant hanger. Would you have left it that galvanized metal or do you like the way that I redid it? For the next project, I take this hexagon little sign from Dollar Tree. I pull the welcome off. Now, originally I was gonna use like the bottom uh, wood grain pattern, but because it ripped when I took that welcome off, I flipped it over and I took the sticker off as well as the little hanger at the top. Before I took that hanger off, I took my zip sander and I kind of sanded down the rest of that residue from the sticker, but it kind of didn't want to come off. So it was no big deal because I'm going to cover it anyway. But then, like I said, I took the hanger off. Next, I wanted to make a maroon color and I didn't have anything, so I just took some truffle Waverly chalk paint as well as crimson Waverly chalk paint and I just mixed those together until I got the color that I liked. I then went to my little sign and at first I was just going to paint half of it, but I did end up painting the entire thing with some help from my little helper. While the paint was still wet, I took some more of that acrylic gold paint and I just kind of dry brushed very lightly at the top um, that was going to be exposed and I didn't worry about the bottom part because I'm going to cover it here in a minute and I also dry brushed some of that gold onto the edges as well. Next, I went in with that same scrapbook paper that we used on the little plant hanger and I just lay it down at the bottom where I want it and then I kind of just press down on the edges so that it will make an indentation on the paper and that way I can cut it out. 
Once I had it cut out, then I go in once again with my disappearing purple glue stick and I glue that down to the bottom. I then go, or I then flip it around and I put the hanger back onto the front side now, but we're working on the back side. So anyway, I put the hanger back on and then I took my inspire and imagine transfer. I decided on the word imagine and I placed it down where I wanted it. Before I placed it down, I made sure to fuzz it really well. You want to put the fuzz on these, you guys. I get a lot of questions about this. I, I, use my fuzzing cloth because you want to get some fuzz on the back of these transfers because they're sticky and when I'm using chalk paint, chalk paint is non-porous so it really likes to stick to it so I like to make sure that when I pull it up it's not going to stretch or ruin my transfer. So I did end up transferring that on with my white chalk paste and um, in the last clip, again, I had my little helper helping me. You guys, she's such a big help to me. I love her so much, and she's always willing to help and always so curious. So when she wants to help me work, I let her because, um, you know, it's bonding time, and I really enjoy it. So anyway, I took a few pieces of greenery with these white flowers. I also took this white jute and some natural colored jute. I tied it around to the bottom and made a simple bow, kind of to make it look like a like bouquet of flowers. And then I took some of these little pop-up stickers from Dollar Tree. They had these beautiful little, I don't know, they kind of look like flowers, but they actually matched that pattern in the scrapbook perfectly. So I put those on the corners where the paint and the scrapbook paper met. And then I glued the flowers to the top. And look how cute this is, you guys. I love it so, so much. And I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Okay friends, so moving on to the last bonus DIY, I wanted to show you guys how cool this is and because a lot of these projects are cutting boards, I had this cutting board from Amazon and they were fairly cheap. They came in a pack of three and I have this concoction that I use in place of my chalk paste with my transfer and then once I pull back that transfer I use my heat gun and it literally burns wood you guys so if you guys want this concoction let me know in the comments down below I would be happy to show it to you but I wanted to show you guys that there's so many different ways to use your chalk transfers and wood burning is just one of the many so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I am so grateful to the people who participated I anticipate it to be kind of a small um, challenge which is just fine with me but whoever decides to participate I appreciate every single one of you as always leave in the comments down below which project was your favorite if you haven't given this video a big thumbs up please do that also share it with your family and friends those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more also, if you haven't subscribed already, you might as well subscribe, become part of the family. I would love to have you. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely gorgeous, you are worthy, and I love each and every one of you with all my heart and soul. Don't forget to check the playlist in the description box below. If you are still here, you are the real OG. Leave in the comments an American flag so that way I know that you are still here. And with all that being said, thank you again for being here and stopping by. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.